You know, there's a lot of things in life we can measure. We can measure how tall you are. We can measure what you weigh. We can measure your closing percentage and sale. But how do you measure mental and emotional toughness? Pain tolerance is one of the biggest factors of someone who can handle pressure. Because the whole idea of pressure is there's pain. That pain could be embarrassment. That pain could be, I don't know if I can handle this. That pain could be a lot of different things. You know, uh, uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson once said, the difference between a hero and an average person is that the hero goes five minutes longer. Meaning the hero can handle the pain five minutes longer than the other person. Chadwick Boseman just died. Okay, here's a man that did Jackie Robinson. Uh, he did Black Panther. The guy's a great speaker. Guy had colon cancer, none of us knew about it. Let me get this straight. He's had colon cancer for four years and the world doesn't know about it? Aren't we living in a time where you're supposed to expose all your problems at any given moment? Aren't all these Huffington Post experts telling people, publicize your pain and share it with the world? Well, Chadwick Boseman says, no, it's none of your business. It's my problem. It's my pain. Never use it as an excuse to not make those movies. I watch both of them. You never made that as an excuse to make Black Panther and to make a bunch of other things this guy did. Never showed hurt. But there are some people that really enjoy being sick. They like the attention. They like the motivation. They like to use it as an excuse. Well, you know, it's my sugar acting up again. They just enjoy being sick. They make up diseases, hypochondriacs, creating afflictions, excuses to limit them from getting better. I can't relate to it because I want to get well as quick as possible. Some people like being ill because they can then do whatever they want to do and blame it on how they grew up. That becomes your excuse for your temper tantrums and your rages and your obsessions and your excesses. You always categorize it. I'm drinking because of the way I was raised. A set of twins was raised by an alcoholic father and one of them grew up and became an alcoholic. They said, you're acting just like your daddy. He said, why are you an alcoholic? He said, because I was raised by an alcoholic. The other twin never touched a drink in his life. They said, why are you not drinking? He said, because I was raised by an alcoholic. Think about it. One way you measure toughness is just look how much people show hurt. Chadwick Boseman, rest in peace, passes away. Four years has colon cancer, no one knows about it. He goes to the doctor. I mean, that this doesn't mean he's not taking care of his body. He's going to the doctor, but he doesn't advertise his pain. Sometimes it's just good not to advertise your pain. Sometimes it's good to not just tell the whole world what you're going through. I'm not telling you don't talk about it with a group of people. I'm not telling you have some private conversations with certain people. I do believe in the ability to have some kind of a form of a release. But the way people are doing it right now, posting everything on Instagram, all this other stuff, what's the point behind it? You need attention? Is that what you need? Mental toughness people are not looking for attention. Mental toughness people are trying to get results. A big difference. You know, life is going to test you every freaking day. You could have one week, the best week of your life. Next week, something dramatic happens. I don't know why life works this way. It just does. You could have one week, everything goes bad. Next week, everything goes good and great. That's how life is. You're getting tested. So sometimes when you're in it and you're going through challenging times, here's what you think. You think in the moment you are the only person that's going through it. It's a problem, by the way. You're going to be tested in your marriage while you're running a career. You're going to be tested with your family, with somebody passing away while you're chasing your dreams. Arnold was going to win Mr. Universe the day before, a few days before his father dies. He tells his mom, I can't make it to the funeral because my dad, if he's watching over me, he wants me to pursue my dreams. I'm going to win Mr. Universe. He goes with Mr. Universe and the rest is history. This doesn't mean he doesn't love his dad. This means he's got a spiritual relationship with his dad. To say, I don't know what I do in this moment here. He goes, he wins, Weeder figures him out, becomes Mr. Olympia, you know, governor, all these other things that he does. In those moments, 
of the decisions we make when we're getting tested and you feel like you're by yourself, those are moments where you're measuring your toughness. Those are moments where you're being tested constantly. Again, there's not a method to say you're 93% tough, you're 71% tough. We can't do that. The only way we can measure toughness at the end of the day is with the results that you end up getting. You ever hear people calling someone soft? Oh, he's soft. Oh, she's so soft. What is soft? I'm asking you, what is soft? You've heard that before. Oh, he's soft. He's a soft player. He's soft in business. What do you, how do you define soft? Soft is someone that doesn't have a backbone. Soft is someone when they're cor cornered and push comes to shove, they quit. So soft is someone that claims their values, but then when it comes down to tough things happen in their lives, they compromise their values. Soft is somebody that declares their intentions. Here's what I'm going to do, world. But then when it gets tough, they say, no, 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 I'm going to quit and take the easy way out. That's how you define soft. Call anybody anything but soft. Do you understand like how bad of a thing it is to be called soft? But a lot of people are soft. I have them in my business. I see them in my industry. There were many times in life where in my mind, I was about to choose the soft decision. Many times in my life. This whole Ralph Waldo Emerson concept about, you know, the only difference between a hero and an average person is the fact that he can take the pain five minutes longer. That's the thing. So, so if you're watching this right now saying, how does that relate to me? Ask yourself, how do you react when tough times show up? How do you react when you're getting tested? How do you react when you have your pain? How do you do under pressure? You, how do you do it? And by the way, every single time you escape pressure and you say, well, the next time it happens, I'm not going to run. No, no, no. That's not how this thing works. Your memory remembers the last three, four times that you handle pressure. And it just reacts through the same way you've been doing your entire life. So if you say, well, this didn't work out. I'm going to go to the next thing. You're going to do the same thing again and again and again and again. Pressure sucks. Being tested sucks. There's nothing about it when you're in it that's exciting. Nothing about it that's exciting when you're in it. But uh, there's a lot of great things about it when you come out of it. There's a lot of exciting things about it when you leave it. And all of a sudden, you're looking at victories taking place. So moving forward, you want to build toughness? You want to be known somebody that gets things done and you're not soft? The next time you're going to say you're going to do something, do it. The next time you're in a pressure type situation where it sucks and you have the ability to lose and be embarrassed, Tolerate the pain a little longer. Go a little longer. The next time you're in a moment that you don't really like being in and it's embarrassing, go a little longer. The, the next time you're going through pressure type situations where you're being tested, talk to yourself. Actually talk to yourself and say, hey, didn't Ralph Waldo Emerson say the difference between a hero and an average person is that you go five minutes longer? I'm going to go five minutes longer. Our body can handle a lot of pain that we don't know about. I'm going to push my body to that level. I'm going to push it and test my limits. That's the beautiful part of it. And I know I've said before that knowledge is the most important thing. But the reality is if you don't have the strength or actually the health to back that up, or even to function as a human being physically, then your knowledge and your mental strength doesn't really even matter. So that comes into play. And being big and strong is also totally useless if you're mentally weak and you quit. Now, being mentally strong should actually lead you to being physically strong because if you are mentally strong, then you can work and train to become physically strong. But if you're mentally weak, then you will not hold the line on the good foods and the good workouts and you won't get physically strong or healthy. So... Train your physical strength and exercise your mental strength by doing the right things, the hard things, the things you know you're supposed to do. Do them.
and be as strong as you can mentally, physically, and emotionally for yourself, for your team, for your family. Hold the line and be strong. And as Robert Louis Stevenson said, don't judge each day by the harvest you reap, but rather by the seeds you plant. And that's what knowledge is. That's what the learning process is, is you're learning something today that you may not even understand how it's going to be valuable. But one day, that piece of knowledge is gonna to come to your aid one day. That thing that you learned is gonna be something that you're gonna lean on one day. That thing that you've worked your ass off to understand better than anybody else in the world. It's going to help you change the world. You cannot win the war against the world if you can't win the war against your own mind. Where I got my work ethic from was the hours I had to spend learning this. When you sit down and you're not smart, and you have a disability, and you still want to be at the top of your class, I didn't want to just get by. When I realized that I can learn through hard work, and I can beat the valedictorian in school, but I got put in 10 hours more a day than he does. You know what kind of strength comes from that? When you're sitting down, that guy, that, that valedictorian's on you for an hour, and you know I caught you. I caught you, and I am dumb. But I have the work ethic to catch you. Whatever you need to do, do it. Stop crying, and just keep hustling. You're stronger than you think. You haven't discovered all that's in you. You'll never know how strong you really are until you face pressure that you've never faced. You put in 120% every time or you don't put in nothing because listen to me very closely. Today is not the food you have. It might not be here next year. It might not be here the year after next. It might not be here the year after that. This is the only moment you've got and you better take advantage of this particular moment. By continuing to push forward, by continuing to run towards my dream. I've got what it takes to make it. Be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. There's a way. Where there's a will, there's a way for me to begin to create a way out of no way. And when you have that kind of consciousness, when you have that kind of spirit, nothing can stop you. Nothing. You need to care about everything, and it starts with yourself. Look yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, what do I want to do every day for the rest of my life? Do that. As Han Solo said, never tell me the odds. Never tell me what box I'm in. Never tell me what I'm up against. Never tell me about your limitations. Never tell me about my limitations. Because that, my friends, is what you have to break free from. And nine times out of ten, I can tell you why you started. You started because you were hungry. So many people float down the river of life without ever even putting their paddles in the water, just hoping and praying and dreaming and wishing that they're going to end up somewhere good. Guys, that's not how life works. You know, you have paddles in your boat. You just got to learn to use them. The first step in really empowering yourself, the first step in really going beyond what you thought is possible is actually to stop judging other people. To stop looking at them and trying to put them in a box because as you build boxes to put other people into, you inevitably put yourself into a box. I'm telling you, I've been thinking, I've been making car. That's what I'm asking you to do. What fuels you? The reason why you're so lazy is not because you don't have the ability. You're so lazy because your dream's so small. The whole game's broken because everybody's too tied up into other people's opinions. I only care about my opinion myself. And I care what my mom and wife and kids and the world think. It's just not as much as I care about the world myself. When you feel like
like growing in the towel, when you feel like surrendering everything you work for, remember why you started. Remember how you felt when you started. You were hungry. Someone right now, they're putting in that work. And if you don't, the future is going to belong to them. Hunger is the feeling of discomfort or weakness caused by a lack of food coupled with a desire to eat. How hungry are you? Here's the worst part about that. That's right. If you quit right now, stop. You're not at risk of embarrassment. You're not at risk of failure. But you're also not at risk of greatness. Well, Paul Harvey said that you can tell you're on the road to success because it's uphill all the way. And, and I'm here to tell you uh, this something for nothing entitlement mindset that invades so many people's lives is a bunch of garbage. I, I can promise you uh, nothing that I've ever had worthwhile uh, did, did I have just kind of fall into my lap like, oh my goodness, I won the lottery. And I, and I once in a while people win the lottery. But basically the people that win the lottery, half of them lose their money within three years, the money they won. And it's because they got money, but they never changed the way they thought. And can I tell you something? If you have all the assets in the world, but you don't change the way you think, you'll lose all the assets in the world. And, and, and what I have discovered in, that, in this whole process of trade-offs is that every step of the way of my journey, I have to trade something off. And it's the, and for you that are young, the good news is your trade-offs will never be easier than when you're young. Because I remember when I when I when Mark and I started out, I think, man, you know, I gave up everything. I went, I was, I was a pastor to go into ministry. I gave up everything, and then I start smiling. I thought, <laughs> I'm sure, I gave up everything. I didn't have anything to give up when I did. I, I was a kid. You know what I mean? I had a. 1964 Ford Falcon and, you know, a U-Haul trailer and five pieces of furniture and life was grand and off, off we went. Here's what I've discovered, Ken, and I think that uh, I want the audience and I want everybody watching around the world to know today, and this, this is very simple. The more successful you become, the higher the trade-offs are. You see, we make a mistake thinking it gets easier. It doesn't get easier. It gets harder. And the more you have, every time you go back and say, am I willing to risk that again? the more you realize, wow, I'm not sure I, I am willing to risk this. And what I've learned is it, the moment I stop making trade-offs is the moment that I plateau. And life is continually filled with trade-offs. In your life and in my life, we, I, my, my expression I use all the time, can you've heard me you say this, you have to give up to go up. You've got to ask yourself, is it going to give me the return? So in the area of strengths, you've got to pour yourself into the things that you're already good at because that will really set you apart from average. Yeah but in areas of choices. Go for those weaknesses. Because you and I, don't, don't you know people that are highly skilled, but they have a lousy attitude or they're not, self, oh. they're not self-disciplined? They're not self And they're never, going to, they're, never going to, they're never going to get anywhere. And they're never going to get anywhere because they didn't. So in areas of choices, work on your weaknesses. But in areas of strengths and skills, just work on your strengths.